everyone. Welcome to Reach Higher Riverside, where we share all Reach Higher stories happening across the nation. My name is Priscilla Grijalva, and I am your Reach Higher Riverside podcast host. On this month's episode, we have an interview with Ryan Sanger. He is a high-end hair extension specialist, and I like to say just a hair specialist in general, that uses the world's best hair located in Los Angeles, California. When he was in high school, he won the regional Wella trend competition for color called Skills USA. He also competed nationally. He currently is a hair lingerie superstar. In the entire world, he was ranked the top three producer. I'm so excited to share this interview with you. Hi everyone, I'm with Ryan. Um, So I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Ryan Zanger. I'm a high-end hair extension specialist located in Los Angeles, California, and I'm originally from Northampton, Massachusetts. Awesome. So can you talk about how you chose to go into your current profession? So I was really fortunate and lucky that when I was younger, hairstylists were around me. My aunt is a hairstylist. And when I was about, and my grandmother also dabbled in it a little bit, like did her siblings hair. Um, And so when I was seven years old, my aunt actually gave me a professional mannequin head and perm rods and rollers and little clips and tools. And it became my favorite toy. Like I literally just played (laughs) with it all the time so it kind of just naturally as I got older it was just like oh I can do this I can do this as like to make money and as a career and like to have fun and make people happy um yeah naturally guided into it like being around my aunt so much and being in her salon and seeing her work and kind of touch with my grandmother as well yeah so you kind of already had the passion that was there and just learned along the way um So it's great that you had all that. I think like family played a big part in that. Um, And just like, I can tell how passionate you are just talking about it too. And you're so great at your work. Um, Can you talk about your high school experience and how you were able to get the training in the field you love? Yeah, so what I, my experience with high school was a little different. So I went to Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. So essentially what I got to do, I got to do high school and hair school at the same time. So for one week, I would be in like, I would say like normal high school, English, math, science, all of that, PE, health class um, for that whole week. And then the following week, I would actually be in hair school at the same school for the entire week. Um, So I got to be able to do hair school and high school all in the same time span. Um, And those schools do exist all over the place. Um, I find on the West Coast, they're a little more rare or they do a mix of the high school with hair school at the end um, of your time in high school, more like 11th and 12th grade, depending on like the way your credits are. Um, But like I said, I'm originally from the East Coast, so they're a little more popular over there. Um, And they have like more, it wasn't just hair school, there was also automotive, auto body, machine shop, carpentry, Farming, nursing, culinary, there's like 14 or 15 wow. shops. And they could start this in ninth graders or like a certain grade level? So ninth grade. Yep. So what you do is the way my school did it is you start in ninth grade, you actually spend one day in every single shop, and then you decide what are your top, I think it's three or top four, then you spend a week in each of those, and then you make a final decision on which one you want to go into. So just curious, what were your top four? Oh, so I really only had top one, but unfortunately I had to pick, (laughs) I had to pick four. So I picked, it was cosmetology, which I ended up, instead of spending one week in, I spent two weeks in. So I actually only had to pick three. Um, For some weird reason, the way logistics worked out, they stuck me in it twice. Um, I did, it was cosmetology, culinary, and carpentry. Okay. I, I love that. I wish they had that at every high school. Like, I mean, and that's just, great. 14 years old. Yeah. And then you've already got the training and then you get like, is it like a certificate or you get certified? How does that work? 
So then it, de- I, it would depend on each, which profession you were going into. Some of them help, like with plumbing, you need so many hours and it takes so many years. Um, you essentially get half of it done in high school and then later you have to finish more. With me, I was able to get all of my hours for my cosmetology license. So when I was finishing up high school, I was 17 and all I had to do was go to state boards the school like filled out all the paperwork and everything like I have my thousand hours that I needed from the state of Massachusetts sign up to take the state board exam you do that the physical and practical and then if you pass that you get your cosmetology license and you're good to go exactly what you would do say you went to high school and then went to hair school afterwards it's the same, ex- you, have to do, you have to do the exact same steps to get, and you get the exact same result at the end of it. Okay. So then when you came out to California, was it different as far as you had to get another certification or how did that work? Yes and no. So I did it specifically. I knew in the state of Massachusetts, if you had your license for three years, your cosmetology license, you could just pay a fee and transfer it to California without having to go to hair school, without having to take a test. Um, So what I did is I waited the three years, got experience, got my feet wet in Boston. And then literally the day I had it for three years, filed for it in California. And then all I had to do was pay the fine, come to California, they take your photo. um, And then like you get a license again. Wow. I wish it was like that with educators. Like I know I have a friend who's a teacher in um, Idaho and Texas. They had moved there from California and they had to get this whole new, like the whole situation. Yeah. It's like, we've already done all our schooling and they have to go back for more and then get like, take another test. It just doesn't make sense. So um, that's why, that's why I waited the three years. I was like, no, no, no. I've already done all this. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not doing this again. And one thing I didn't mention too about the high, school, like the high school experience I went to and the way vocational schools are set up, I didn't pay anything for it. So wow. actually, it's, it's a private school that you have to, um, you get into, they have to like approve you to get into, but your sending district, the city of Northampton actually paid for me to go. And I never had to pay anything out of pocket other than Um, In cosmetology, you get a kit which has like your scissors, your supplies, all your tools. Like actually all I had to do is pay a few hundred dollars for that, but there was no tuition, there was no extras, and we even did fundraising and stuff for our kits. There's some people that didn't even have to pay a dollar, very fortunately. Wow, so you didn't have to take out a lot of loans or any loans, it seems like, because you're just like... I have never had a student loan in my life. See, we told... We totally need to get that out in California. We need to work on this, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, because think about it. I was 17, had my cosmetology license. I could go out into the industry, start working right away with zero student loan, making like good money. I didn't have to do, I didn't have to work at like Subway or Staples or like a, like some other place to kind yeah. of get my footing. Like right off the bat at 17, I could go into a salon take clients or assist or just I can get right into it that's amazing okay I hope we get that out here (laughs) I would I'm like the biggest advocate for it because the awesome thing too is is you say you go through that and then you're like I want to be a tax accountant cool while you're in school for that while you're in college and you're getting your degree for that Instead of working, I would say like like an odd job making like minimum wage, you could work in a salon. Yeah. You could say you went to you went through the culinary route. You can actually like like my ex boyfriend, he ran a restaurant while he went to college. That's amazing. It's like you 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 get that while other people you take the it's like the standard route. You go to high school. Then you're working, like you're working at Subway. You work, I worked at Staples, so I always use Staples as an example when I was in high school before I started hair. Um, I worked at Staples, and, and so instead of going to college, going to college while working at Staples and doing that, it's actually you can go to college while working in an industry. Okay. And above minimum wage, like right off the bat. 
So who do I get a contact in Massachusetts? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have two teachers that are amazing that are engraved in my head. Can you uh, tell us how you ended up in California? I see you're in your salon right now, but can you talk yeah. about like how you ended up out here? Yeah, so right now I'm actually, I'm currently in my own salon. I'm located in Century City on Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, what drew me to LA originally was one, the sunshine huge like the weather the sunshine 70 70 degrees all the time was a huge draw to me and then also like the opportunity that LA presents especially I'm in the beauty industry there's massive amounts of opportunity in Southern California for my industry and then also I love the people like you gotta it was it's a melting pot of people from all over the world all different industries and just that mix of everything. I was like, this. Th those are all the things that excite me. I should go be there. I should go hang out there. I need to be there. I need to live my life there. Um, so it was kind of like a no brainer. Once it clicked and I visited in the first 24 hours, I was like, yep, I'm going, let's do this. <laughs> I'm yeah, you sound like me. I'm from Texas and I, I moved out to California and I never went back. I, I do love California. It's just so good. It's interesting. People used to always ask me, like, well, what if you don't like it? Would you ever move back? And I'm like, well, I would move forward. I wouldn't move necessarily, like, back. I would find another place, go another realm, find, like, I'm a very, like, forward kind of driven person. And the cool thing, too, is, is you can always go back if you wanted to. Yeah, that's true. Really, we didn't. And plus, you got your, your license now. It's covered in all basically both yep. states so <laughs> yeah, and in California the cool thing is when you get licensed in California because the requirements are higher than like every other state once you have your cosmetology license in California it you can pretty much transfer it anywhere so if I wanted to go to Alabama tomorrow I could just apply for it literally probably online or fax something or call and just like get my license there like right away Wow, I didn't know that we had more requirements in California. That's good to know. For everything. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite part about being a hairstylist? I would say, honestly, it really, it kind of probably sounds cliche, but like making people feel good, making people happy. Like I have the ability, and especially with the last two years of the world, I have the ability to make someone feel good even when they're at their lowest even when the whole world has frozen and everything seems like it's on fire and everything's going to shit, like I still have the ability to make someone feel good, to put a pep in their step. Like someone might walk in here and not feeling great about themselves, not feeling confident, just kind of feeling a little bit low. And I get to watch them walk out of here, head held high, big smile on their face, tossing their hair and like no one can touch them. Yeah, that's so and true. It, like, it's just, it's something very magical and it, it's not even tangible. You can't touch it. It's a feeling. It's an energy that just comes forth. And that's also why I specialized in hair extensions because when you add something like hair extensions to someone's hair, someone's head, it's something they'll naturally never have. So that same feeling of confidence that same feeling of how beautiful I feel it's like tenfold intense like I've had a handful can probably even say many a women afterwards that when I reveal what their hair looks like they've cried and they've literally been like I've not had like I've never felt this beautiful in like 20 years I've, I've not had hair like this in 15 20 sometimes even 30 years and just in the time with me, now they're walking out into the world with a higher vibration, like I said, a pep in their step, a confidence that will domino into their relationships, that will domino into their work life, that will domino into, like I said, dating. Like when you feel fantastic and amazing, like that just radiates and people are attracted to you. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I think that makes a lot of people happy because like our hair is a big part of our life and we we need to have frames good hair. Your yes. <laughs> it literally frames your face. It plays on identity. 
and we all have a hair PTSD story. Like we've all felt a feeling of what it is like when it doesn't go good. Yes, I can agree with that. Yeah. And then when we do feel good, it's like, wow, like Ryan's just made us look good. Look at us. <laughs> the smile on the face. And that's just, just something so beautiful. It's not, it's like, it's, it's not even tangible. It's just an energy. And I just really love giving that to people. Like it even gives me kind of a high. Well, that's good. Makes you happy. Yeah. What are some tips? This is kind of a long question. What are some tips you can give school counselors as they work with students that have not decided on a career and tips for those that want to go into your particular career field? Okay. Oh, that's a really good one. So I would say tips for counselors. And even like I would say this kind of can mix um, in like with the students in there too is there's not one path. There's many, and I also feel like in, it's 2022 in today's day and age, there's many paths you can go and just keeping your mind open to those and not knowing, I feel like 20, 30, 40 years ago, there was kind of like one path, like everyone started here and you went here, but I feel like now it's a lot, it's a lot wider, it's a lot more diverse. And then when you're finishing up with high school, you can go into a trade school you could start your own business. You can go into so many different colleges and realms. And I kind of feel like it's staying open to that and recognizing it might be a trade school. Mm -hmm. like, you are, like, and the one thing about especially trade schools and trades after high school, it's they're all amazing industries. They're also all recession proof. True, that is very true. I was like, even I can even I can say they're recession proof, and then we also learn that they are pandemic proof as well. Yes, <laughs> everybody needs their hair done and everything uh, else. <laughs> the whole world stopped, and I had people knocking at my door wanting to get their hair done, and it was like, uh, no, <laughs> can't have this. It just showed that it's literally no matter what's going on, people want to feel good, and people need things done. People need their houses worked on. People need and it's a fantastic realm. Um, I feel like I digressed a little bit, but going back to it's okay. um, with counselors, I would probably say just kind of widen the scope of what's possible of the paths. Like I said, there's so many different trades, like from colon, like all the different ones from culinary to nursing, to cosmetology, to carpentry, to plumbing. Um, there's all these realms and, for students, one thing I would say is if you're good, like, like speaking into the cosmetology and beauty and hair side of things, if you're good at math, science, and you're very creative, it's an industry you could do very well at. Because at the basis of it, that's what I do all day long. It's you mix math and you mix science and you add the creativity into it. And like, that's hair. Yeah, and I don't think that a lot of people realize that, that you need to have math until, skills. I didn't realize it until years later. And the funny thing is now with the perspective I have throughout my entire schooling, math and science were my jam. I was so good at it. I like, it was just like, it's where I really shined. And then now, like I said, with the perspective, it's like, oh, of course I'm like good at hair. Like it, <laughs> it's what it takes to be good at hair. You have to be great at math and you have to know science. You have to be interested in the science of it as well. Um, and then you just toss the creativity mind onto it and it just cultivates in a very beautiful way. Okay. Well, I think this next question you kind of answered, but if there's anything else you want to answer or add to it, what is, um, well, actually, no, you didn't. Uh, what is one thing you wish you knew before you went into your career? That Oh, that's a good um, one thing I wish I knew before going into my career, I would say new slash like also going back, like a little piece of advice to toss into there is it's equal parts creativity and business. Okay. For every, I would say for every hair class you take, you want to take a business class as well. 
I feel like that's one thing, especially with hair school, beauty realm of thing, it's not always spotlighted enough because at the end of the day, you are entering an industry and a business. And I kind of didn't latch on to that until probably about five or six years out of school. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's not just the creativity and the artistry. It's also the business, but the business, you can also have creativity and artistry in it as well. And it really like, it comes together. Um, okay. No one, no one really told me that. I would say I kind of figured that out years later. It all, it all mixes together in a really nice way. Yeah, that's good. How have you embraced opportunities in your career field? Just say yes to everything. So okay. when you start, like, I, I honestly, in, and I'll kind of elaborate on it more, the simple answer is yes to everything. And then the elaborating of that is when you say yes to everything at the beginning. At the beginning, everything just open. Everything's new. Everything's exciting. Just always say yes until you have no more time to say yes anymore. And the saying yes, how that dominoes is, one, the universe and the world knows you're accepting. So it also gives you more, it knows you're gonna say yes. So it's like, oh, here, we're gonna give you this. Also, people know you're gonna say yes. So more opportunities come your way. Um, I always said yes. So when someone needed something or an opportunity, whether it was doing a celebrity client, whether it was being head of hair and makeup for a theater company when I was younger, like just, all over the place, working with wigs for cancer and chemo patients, like wow. all of these things, it was just, I just said yes. And then you learned, you do, you figure it out. But all of those came to me essentially because the people presenting the opportunity kind of knew I was gonna say yes, because I always said yes. Okay. And even now in the position that I am owning a salon, helping other people, mentoring younger stylists. If I have something come up, if I have a project and I need someone's help, I need to bring someone in, my brain goes to who's the person that I know is gonna say yes and show up and do a great job. Yeah. But it's the yes. If there's someone that's like says no a lot, it's like, well, I'm not gonna ask them because they're probably gonna say no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here to Cindy and Cindy always says yes. Yeah, and plus you are a lifelong learner because you show like saying yes, you're willing to learn and take advantage of those opportunities. So that's that's really good. Who is the most famous person or person, people, um, hair you have styled? What I'm, were those moments like for you? Let's say probably like the top two that come to mind would be Kesha and Leanne Rhymes. Oh. Um, I feel like I've done a all different types of people and some more famous in certain realms and others and industries but those two really pop up um and what was it like I mean it was a huge kind of trophy moment for me as a stylist as an individual that like I've done this like I did it I, it was amazing um did color and extensions and it was just like kind of like afterwards, I just remember like driving home and it was like, like I did that, like a, giving yourself that pat on the back. I call it give yourself a trophy. Um, yeah. Something I worked hard and many years for and through saying yes is how those two people also came into the equation was someone else needed me to do them and they knew I always said yes. Was it kind of like one of those moments where you're like, wow, I just did Kesha's hair and you walked away and you're like, oh my gosh, did that just happen? <laughs> It's a li it, yeah, there's a little, there's like kind of like a little like surrealness to it. Yeah. And I will also say it was the most just relaxed, awesome, casual, like they're also just like people, like they're just like, they're yeah. just awesome, cool people as well. So like 360, the whole experience was like really awesome from meeting them from like interacting to the drive home and letting it soak in. It's like, wow, like that's something I got to do that not everyone gets to do. Yeah. Like, and that was like a really cool moment. My mom was really excited. I'm sure your mom was. <laughs> yeah. She probably wanted to see pictures or something. Like, did this really happen? <laughs> like right away. She took a picture and I was like, no, it was like midnight and like, you don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, but just trust me, mom, I did it. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few of those moments. Um, like, I remember when my students met Michelle Obama, I was like, did that just happen? Like, that was just like, 
a wow like moment because it made me happy that they were happy. Kind of like you talk about your helping yeah. people with their hair, like you see them happy. Um, me seeing other people makes me really happy when stuff like that happens to them. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, you give so much back to people. And then when you see something happen, you're just like, wow, it's like a moment you'll never forget. And I think, it, and I love how you said that. I really think that, that the helping people playing on, like with helping people feel better about themselves, helping people in school, which is just helping people in general, I feel like is really one of the most magical sweet spots of the world we live in and the universe and energy and all of that. It always, when you help someone else, it always leads to a positive, better place for you, for them, and for the world. It's like a yes. really sweet little like interaction that I feel like doesn't always get the most um, notice to it. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's so true. What is one thing a lot of people don't know about you that you would want them to know? <sighs> I'm a pretty open book, so a lot of people kind of know a lot. <laughs> um, I always say, so when I, certain classes or retreats or education stuff I go to, they'll always ask for like a fun fact. And one thing about me is I love to like build furniture. So actually everything you see in the studio behind me, I actually built. I didn't attach things to the wall, but like I built the cabinets. I custom some of them. The station that is actually right in front of me, you've seen it. But the yeah. station I did all myself, that this hair display that's right here, I built completely from scratch by myself. I wow. tiled the whole sink area right there myself. Um, like I like to work with my hands and build things. I used to build furniture a lot with my dad um, when I was like 18, 19, 20, living in Boston. We used to do that a lot. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, that helps you had all that background already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever have any Ikea furniture, I know who to call. I'm just oh kidding. my God, I have so much fun with Ikea furniture. People think I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, no, I'll come over. I'll do it. it I'm like, totally fine. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. <laughs> um, let's see, what are some tips you can give someone who wants to go into your field? To go into my field, I would, I would probably say go to the cheapest hair school you can find. You do not need to go to a crazy brand. You essentially all you need is you, you need your cosmetology license is the most important thing. Hair school is there to teach you how to be safe and be safe to the public. Um, don't need to go, like I said, to the most expensive school. I'd actually find the cheapest school, do everything you got to do because the way hair schools are structured, they have to teach you certain amount of same things. So whether you go to one that's 40,000 or 80,000, you all have to learn this. Now, other ones, you might get a little more, you might get a little less, but what I always recommend to people is get your cosmetology license and the amazing world we live in now and social media and technology, it's very easy to reach out and connect with people. While you're in hair school, you'll start to naturally admire certain stylists, professionals, business owners, extension specialists, color specialist in the industry and when you get out of school reach out to them like reach out to them tell them how much you admire their work and you would love to come shadow them for the day work for them for a week or maybe two years you might assist them um, and that's really where you're going to hone in and gain those artistic and real world skills yeah um, what I see happen a lot is people focus a lot on getting that in hair school and it's not until you go through hair school you start working then you kind of realize like oh I wasn't quite gonna get that from hair school um was it we live in this amazing world now with technology where you can literally DM someone and it's like, oh my, I absolutely love your work. I live in Milwaukee and I know you're in LA, but I would love to come out for a week and shadow you for five days, like with yeah. that possibility. And that right there is going to be, you are going to gain so, so much from doing that. Um, and you can take all that knowledge, go back to wherever you're from, go back to your salon, go back to assisting someone. There's so many different realms, but I feel like not enough attention is drawn to that. Um, so like I said, find the cheapest hair school, get your license. Hair school is going to teach you how to be safe and protect the public because mm -hmm. it is huge. 
um, in what we do as well. And then reach out to people you admire, you love their work, tell them that, and then ask to shadow, to assist the day, a week, a month, um, and gain even more knowledge there and just always stay a student. Mm -hmm. I'm now 10 years, um, I've now been licensed for 10 years. I went to hair school when I was 14. I'm now 27. Um, so do the math on that. And <laughs> <laughs> still a student. Still to this day, there are certain people I'm like, oh, you're going to do that. I'm going to watch. Yeah. I mean, I think that's so important. Even like in my profession, I, I've been doing this a while. Like I'm starting my 18th year and I constantly reach out to people that I know um, are smarter than me, I guess you could say, or have more knowledge, or I just, I feel I like... I say this. Everyone knows something I don't. Yes. It's, 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 not even like, it's not even like a smarter thing. It's just like, right, you know a bunch of stuff in a realm I know nothing about. Yeah. You know things you don't know about, and by us just having a conversation, a sentence, multiple conversations, we can, we can share that. Yeah collaborate yes that's exactly it. it's collaboration and community are huge in this world um huge yeah and also with that education unless you're in boston it's yeah. cheaper if you're going to school in high school to get your yeah. technical degree so yeah it depends yeah. on that um and but also one thing now with so many schools and the world there's so many grants and ways and things, and I know you know a lot on that realm of things, to just look into. You don't know from LGBTQIA to woman-owned to, like, just so many different things. They're out there. You have to search. You also have to be a seeker and find them. No one's going to be like, here it is. Yeah, you have to be able to seek it and take the initiative. Um, so since we're talking about that, October 1st, the FAFSA opens nationwide. So if you're a student interested in going to college, career technical education, any of that, be sure you do your FAFSA. Um, is there anything else you would like our listeners to know? Oh my God, I feel like we covered so much. You had so many good questions. Um, is there anything else I want people to know? I would just say, be kind to yourself, be kind to yourself, be open to the world and different possibilities and different thought patterns and beliefs and just lead with kindness and be like a good person throughout life. Yeah, I agree. It's the best advice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to like sprinkle that in there. <laughs> at the end of our podcast, we like to do the sunshine spotlight. Can you tell me at least one thing that's made you happy this week? Oh my God, my little dog. Her name is Winnie. You met her. Yes, it's a beautiful chihuahua. <laughs> little 10 pound chihuahua. And she just like lights up my life and is a little ball of sunshine herself. And like on a, this week, we were just like cuddling on the couch and I just looked at her and she just made me smile like so big and happy. And she's just like my kind of like weekly, weekly and daily sunshine. Aww. Well, I love your dog. I would totally just... She loved you. <laughs> That's good. Uh, for my Sunshine Spell, I'd have to say this past week, I was at a national conference. Um, it's called NACAC. And yeah. um, one of my administrators went out there um, for like a day just to to be there, network and present. And um, it just made me very grateful to have such a supportive boss um, who just really gets the role of the school counselor, but also is very supportive and a good administrator. So... That's my sunshine spotlight. Um, Amazing. Beautiful, really. Thank you. <laughs> Other than that, that's that's all I got. Um, if you could just say goodbye to all our listeners out there. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. I hope you take away something um, and it positively influences and affects your life in some way. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Reach Higher Riverside. You can follow us on Twitter at RH Riverside. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Reach Higher Riverside. You can also subscribe to our iTunes or Google Play Music and give us a rating. Thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate all of you tuning in. And as Michelle Obama would say, when they go low, we reach higher.